Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Misty Hino with Misty Hino's Lego Robotics. Yes, the Utah Utes. Um, wonderful people. We went through your state uh, this summer, all their national parks. Um, we've been there before and we just always love driving through Utah. Um, a little known fact, they're not really 100% sure how Utah got its name. Um, some people say it's from the Ute tribe. Some people say it's from the Apache tribe with different meanings that they're not really sure of. So maybe we can all agree that it's Native American and let's take it from there. Anyway, this video today is, sorry again, my voice has been losing it lately. A lot of, you know, team spirit at school, yelling, cheering, and it's just shot, but stay with me. Um, this video today those of you that have been following the last few videos have noticed that we've gone through the booklet, the booklet of, you know, just maneuvering and programming. And once students are done, then we take the maneuver test. If you want to see what that is, stay with me. So the maneuvering test is now where I get to see individually, do students understand what we've been doing the last week, week and a half with their robot and just knowing how to maneuver their robot. Totally taken away from sensors. I just want to understand if the students can do certain functions on the robot, a brick program, whether they can uh, look at some tasks and see whether they can do this themselves. So I give them a chance to go through it, kind of like a test, where I give them a chance to study it, make sure they know it, and then they can take their test. So let's take a look at what they have to figure out. If any of you robotics teacher wants a copy of this, it's, uh, it's just basically a Google Doc, and I can send it to you if you email me at hinolegorobotics at gmail.com, and I will send it to you. Um, you know, if you don't want to just copy this or, you know, you can also just edit my file and do something different if you want. So I have six maneuvers. Here is what I will do. I will have the students look at this, practice these, and when they're ready to take their test, what I'm going to basically do is give them a number cube. Let's see if I have one. Rats must be in my, must be in my cabinets. And then when the student's ready to take their test, they'll just roll their number cube. Whatever number pops up is the maneuver they must do for their test. So let's go through this, and then I'll actually get a robot and demonstrate all of these for you. So number one, going forward around a cup either way, so they can go around the cup to the left or to the right, and they just have to come back to their starting position. I will show you that with a robot. Number two, going forward. If it doesn't have a time, then the student can figure out, they can make up whatever time they want. Going forward, going past a marked line. So I can um, use painter's tape to create that line. And they will go backwards, coming back to that same spot. So they will have to figure out how much time it'll take to get past that certain line. Number three, going to first base and then second base, just like baseball. So I will have a home plate, first base, second base. All the robot has to do is go from home to touch first, touch second. Uh, number four, a two second stop going forward and then they can figure out how much time that's for and then doing a two second spin. So these last three are basically just combinations. Uh, number five, going forward, a two second stop and a 10 second spin. So now they're having to change the, you know, the amount of time. And then the last one, going backwards, a two second stop, a two second spin, and then forward. So what I tell my students is they have as long as they want to practice this, they can even write notes down. Like some of these, one and three are probably the toughest on here. And if they need to, they can write, okay, I did forward, I did a, you know, a 
0.75 left turn just so that when they take their test, they don't have to go back and try to figure this all out again. They can just copy their notes. So now let's go get a robot and do all of these for a demonstration. All right, maneuver number one. I'm gonna lay a strip down of uh, electrical tape, red cup three feet away. So the maneuver is that they're gonna go around the cup either way, so going left or going right, and they will basically come back and touch the line. So go around the cup, touch the line, and it looks like this. So go around the cup, either to the left or right, and then come back, and as long as they can touch the line, they were successful. Let's go to maneuver two. Okay, maneuver two. Um, we can use the same line that we used for the cup. And I made another line there. You can uh, figure out the distance if you want. Um, but here's what they need to do in maneuver two. Wheels on the line. And they will send their robot just forward. But here's the trick. They need to get the time so precise that when their robot stops over here, they're going to do a two-second stop, that the blue needs to be in between their wheel and their ball bearing. So let me show you what we're looking for. When their robot stops, the wheels need to have passed the blue, but not past their ball bearing. And then they'll just back up past the line. So let me go ahead and show this to you. So robot, wheels on the line. You see how the blue line's in between the wheel and the ball bearing? And they just need to come back. And they don't have to do that on the way back. They just need to come back past the line. So that would have been a successful number two. Let's go to number three. Okay, everybody, this is maneuver number three. We are playing baseball here. So home plate right here. Some, some part of your robot must be touching that. We are going to round first base, touch and round first base, and then some part of your robot needs to land on second base here. Whether that's a tire, the ball bearing, some part needs to land there like you would in baseball. So it should look like this. Going to first base, rounding first base, and we land on second base right there. That would be a successful maneuver number three. Let's go on to four. Okay, maneuver number four is going to be a two-second stop at the beginning. Going forward, and if it just says that, I let my students decide how long that's going to be. That's up to them. And then a two-second spin. So let's go to the floor and watch this. So there's their two-second stop. There's their forward. And there's the two-second spin. And I know what you're saying. This is a lot easier than maybe they're going around the cup or the baseball. You're right. And, you know, hopefully they can uh, roll this and get a four rather than a number one or a three because those are the tougher ones. But shh, don't say anything to them. Let's go on to number five. Okay, number five is going forward again for an unspecified amount of time. That's up to them. A two-second stop and a ten-second spin. So this one is pretty similar to number four. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So there's the two second forward, there's a two second stop, and then the 10 second spin. There we go. So that is a successful uh, maneuver number five. Let's go to the last one, number six. And here is the last one. Maneuver number six, going backwards, leave it up to them on the time, a two second stop, a two second spin, and then a forward for however long they want. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So there's the backwards, there's the stop, there's the two second spin, and then there's the forward. So there is a successful maneuver number six. And that's, that's it. 
So I tell my students to, with their partner, practice these six because they never know what they're going to get when they roll. Um, I told them that as a team, they may write down notes. Like with the baseball, they can write down how long their forward was for, how long their turn was for. And then when they're ready, when they feel like, yes, I can do this myself, because as a team, that's fine that they can program together, but I want to see that individually they can program. So every student will come to me, and when they're ready, they'll just roll. And if they roll a four, then that particular student will have to show me that for their test. Another student might roll a five, and they'll have to do that for their test. So that's how I base um, their maneuver test and I let them know that if you mess up, I'm not going to tell them, you know, what to do to fix it. I'll just say, hey, your robot messed up. They didn't do this two second stop. And they'll be the ones to have to figure out how to fix that. But I will not say, hey, you know, um, you know, you need to go back and do this exactly. I'll just let them figure out what it was in the program I did not see. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That is my maneuver test. Um, it, it should for, uh, you know, just starting off the year be a great platform for students to now move on to more difficult things. But in the beginning of the year, I just want to see that students understand sequencing, how to get this program in the right order, knowing that a time, uh, follows their actions so that they know, you know, how long is this action going to take? And then just being able to visually see what they want the robot to do and then put that all together in a program. So it's super successful as far as, you know, when students go through this, now I can understand that students can find brick program. They know how to, to add blocks to their program. They know how to change a forward to a spin or a backwards and things like that. And then what that will do is excitingly now that will lead into our sumo bot. Um, as far as programming, because in my, our sumo bot programming, we have stops. We, um, you know, they've already had some familiarity with their ultrasonic sensor, their color sensor. So it kind of is, we're kind of just getting all of their skills together. You know, like Karate Kid, you know, he had to know how to do a lot of um, technique before he can compete. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um, like I said before, if you email me at uh, Hino Lego Robotics at gmail.com, I'll go ahead and just share that Google Doc with you that has all these maneuvers on there. Okay? I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out.